May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. And uh, thank you for coming and thank you for inviting me to this uh, amazing Iftar gathering. Iftar is a, a good moment to reflect on our day's affair. And it isn't always an easy time, especially because you've been fasting the whole day. The last thing you want to do is listen to somebody give you a lecture just before iftar. You just want to eat and you want to get on with your life. I understand. Been there, done that. But unfortunately, there has been a program organized and I've been asked to come and speak. And I've been told to give a speech about Ramadan. And I've also prepared one. So you will have to just bear with me, inshallah, when I deliver a few points that I think would help us all refocus and also realign ourselves with the spirit and the teachings of Ramadan, inshallah. It's not that you don't know Ramadan, I think you know it well enough. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. The Arabic word Ramadan, can we, can we not talk please, if that's okay? Um, what is the Arabic, what is the meaning of the Arabic word Ramadan? Who knows the meaning of the Arabic word Ramadan? Who knows the meaning? I'm asking you a question. Please pay attention if you don't mind. What is the meaning of the Arabic word Ramadan? Nobody knows? Yes, young man. Is it to burn? Very, very close. Very close. Yes, young man. No, that's not the meaning of it. That's what happened. But the meaning of it. So, look, I don't want to be telling you all. But many of us have been fasting for 20, 30, 40 years in the month of Ramadan. Have you stopped and asked yourself, what is the meaning of this word Ramadan? You should have. If you haven't, it's a good time to ask. Okay. Yes. Um, in my prayer, Ramadan, I think it's like you only fast for the poor people. It's like, you don't know how people are in Ashkodah, you don't know how they are in Ashkodah, you don't know how they are in Ashkodah, you don't know how they are no, I'm not asking that. I'm asking the meaning of the word Ramadan. Arabic word Ramadan has a specific meaning. It's already been answered. Already been answered. Then you can, you can also add. Scorching heat. Did you just Google it? No. You didn't. <laughs> Good. Because uh, many of us don't know the meaning of the word Ramadan and we fast. And it is not a good thing that we don't know the meaning. We should know the meaning. It means the scorching heat of the sun. Why has Allah used the analogy? Why have people, why has Allah revealed the command of fasting in the month of Ramadan? Ramadan that has been known to be associated with a month when the sun's heat is so intense outside. Do you know why? I'll tell you in a minute. What is the meaning of the Arabic word so? You fast. Siyam is the plural. The Arabic word singular. So, what does it mean? What does the Arabic word so mean? No. Who said abstention? Well done. Arabic word saum means to abstain from, refrain, control yourself. Now, in Islam, every action, everything that you do is active. All the other worship. Prayer is active. You move. You can see your body moving. You're, you're reciting the Quran. You're doing the course, you're doing etc. When you're giving charity, actively you're giving something away. When you go to Hajj, people can see you. All the ibadah is active. But fasting is not active, it's passive. How is it passive? You are abstaining from, rather than doing. Abstaining from eating. Abstaining from drinking. Abstaining from fulfilling your desires during the daylight hours. When you abstain from, it becomes passive. When you do, it becomes active. So Rasulullah has given us a very beautiful saying of Allah, where Allah Azza wa is saying, "Asawu li wa ana ajsibi." The complete hadith is: All the actions of the children of Adam are for him or her. Every action, every ibadah, every worship we do is for us. Allah Rasulullah says, Allah is saying, "Asawu li." Fasting is for me. And I shall give it to return. Ladies and gentlemen, Allah is promising a special return for those who fast. Allah is promising that fasting is for you. No, fasting is for Allah. If fasting is for Allah, Allah will give us a special return. 
Why is fasting for Allah specifically? Why? What, why is it so different to other worship? Come on, people, talk to me. Don't be shy. Yes, young person. Is it because Allah lets you see God by doing anything? No, no. Other religions also fast because Allah says in the Quran, "Kutiba alaykum al-siyam kama kutiba ala al-ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon." Fasting has been made an obligation upon you, just like it was made an obligation upon people who came before you, other people. The Jewish people, the Christian people in their scripture, fasting is prescribed to. And Allah is rem reminding you and me that you're not the first one to fast. People before you were fasting. Jewish people and Christian people fast. This is part of their religion too. But why is fasting only for Allah? Anyone else wants to answer? I, yes. You wouldn't starve for yourself. Why wouldn't you starve for yourself? Because then you're I, I know you are on the, he's on the right path, he's on the right track, he's, his thinking is what I'm thinking, yes. Because no one can see that. No one can see that. Okay, nearly there. What did you want to say, young man? No one knows you. So. No one knows that you're doing it. Your hand went up. No. Same thing. You can't fake fasting. Either you're fasting or you're not fasting. How can you fake fast? You can come and tell somebody that you're not fasting, but that's not true. Either you've eaten or you've not eaten. There is no in-between. That's why it's one act of worship that can't be faked. Either you're fasting or you're not fasting. And when we do this because we're truly conscious of Allah, you can serve me, there's Jalebi right in front of me. Right? You can put me dates, you can put me biryanis, you can put me chicken roast, uh, you can put me lamb uh, roast, you can do anything you like right now. Serve me all you like. I will eat. Why would I not eat? Even if you pay me a million, I will still not eat. Do you know why I want it? Because I'm only fasting for Allah. I'm not fasting for you. I'm not fasting for anybody else. I'm fasting for Allah. Because I'm fasting for Allah, Allah is saying, I will give you special reward of the day of judgment. You know what that special reward is? Allah has prepared a gate called al riyah for people who fast. On the day of judgment, that gate will call. All people who are fasting, come to us. Come to my me today. Allah said, there is a saying of Rasulullah which indicates that Allah will say, Oh my servant, you are fasting for me? Here I am. I am here in town. You are fasting for me? Here I am. Look, I am here. Allah will say that. Allah will say to all of us, You wanted to fast, you did it so well, and therefore I shall give you the return. The verse of the Quran that I recited earlier on, what is the purpose of fasting? What's the purpose of fasting? Yes, young people. Yes, you do it for Allah. What's the purpose? Yes. One second. Younger than you. Yes, you got rewarded, you got close to Allah, but that's not the purpose of fasting. What's the purpose of fasting? I'm, I'm, I'm discriminating. God, young man. No, it's not the purpose. What's the purpose of fasting? Yes. Getting taqwa. So that you may gain taqwa. What does it mean? What does taqwa really mean? Taqwa means Allah consciousness. I'm seeing lots of disturbance. People are talking and looking around. Can people pay attention and not talk? It's easier for me to then deliver. If I see you looking around, then I get distracted myself. I want to know what's going on. So pay attention this way, everybody. Adults and young people. So that we can gain taqwa. What is taqwa? Taqwa is Allah consciousness. What is Allah consciousness? Somebody may be asking. Allah consciousness is very simple. To remember that Allah is present in your life 24 hours a day. To remember Allah is present in your life 24 hours a day. That's fasting. That's called taqwa. How do you become mutaqi? How do you do, how do you develop taqwa? How do you develop that thinking? Number one, develop your mind. Number one, develop your mind. To develop taqwa is to develop the mind that accepts, recognizes, and constantly looks around and sees the signal of Allah in their life, present. Allah is present. Allah knows everything. Allah sees everything. Allah hears everything. In fact, Allah knows what is in my mind before I even know it myself. If you can develop your mind like that, you'll develop taqwa. I'll give you an example. 
Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu who was walking around, he used to go out at night in the capital city of Muslims in Medina to listen to what's going on. To understand if people are happy, if there is depression, if they're upset, if there is poverty, etc. Just to listen with his ears and see with his eyes. One day he's walking along the streets of Medina and he hears two people talking. Two people talking. From the voice, he understands the conversation is taking between, between a mother and a daughter. The mother is saying to the daughter, go on, why don't you add some water to the milk? Why don't you add some water to the milk? And the daughter says, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Go on, do it before day bright breaks. She goes, no, mom, that's cheating. I can't do that. We've got little milk today from our goat. It's okay, we'll sell this milk. Mom said that's not enough for our family. Add some water to the milk. Cheat. The daughter says, no. Mother and the daughter are having an argument. Eventually, mom says, look, what are you, what are you scared of? The daughter goes, mom, haven't you heard? Umar ibn Khattab, the ruler of our country, our Muslim land, has made it illegal to add water to the milk. And if he get caught, he'll be punished. She said, ha, 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 ha. Umar, he's sleeping in his house. He's not going to see you. How is he going to know? So this girl said something very beautiful. She said, Mom, Umar may be asleep. But the Lord of Umar, your Lord, my Lord, Allah never sleeps. Allah will see me adding water to the milk. So I won't do it. Umar was so impressed by this girl's response. He came home, of course. Next day, he called for that family. And guess what he did? Guess what he did? He proposed marriage for his son to that family. He said, I want a girl who is muttaqi like this girl. I want a girl who is Allah conscious like this girl. I want a girl for my son who is Allah conscious like this girl. So ladies and gentlemen, at the depth of darkness, when you are in your own room, when nobody sees you, remember Allah sees you, knows you, hears you, and that is taqwa. If you can develop that thought process, if you can develop that idea, if you can develop that conscience, you've developed that mind. Number two, change your habits. When you change your habits by repeating the same action again and again, it should stay. How many days do you fast? 30 days. For you to change a habit, it takes 21 days. Scientists, neuroscientists have said, if you keep on doing the same thing again and again for 21 days, you will change your habit. Allah has given you 30 days to change your habit. Don't do the same thing again and again. You smoke, you don't smoke in the month of Ramadan for 30 days, for 15, 16 hours. Why do you want to smoke straight after you start? You don't smoke Throughout the month of Ramadan, because you are conscious of Allah, while fasting, you say, I'm not going to smoke. Give up on that bad habit of ours that we see our community doing it over the top. Or bad habit of lying, breaking promises, using abusive language, throwing rubbish on the street, bad habits of sleeping too much, bad habits of watching too much television, bad habits of doing lots of things that we do. You don't do it in the month of Ramadan, do you? No. You don't lie, you don't cheat. You keep time in the month of Ramadan. Why don't you keep time after Ramadan? Have you ever had anyone being late for iftar? No. If these organizers are late, today iftar is at what? 7.56? Yeah, yeah. 57. No, 57. He even knows the minute. <laughs> Thank you for knowing the minute. It's, it's on there. It's on there. It's on the program. If anybody is one minute late for serving iftar, all the Muslims will say, iftar time, iftar time, iftar time. But when it comes to weddings, the wedding card says, wedding starts at 3 o'clock. Most Muslims haven't turned up. <laughs> Why? Why are you so meticulous in timekeeping when it comes to iftar and suhoor, but you don't keep the same time outside Ramadan? You haven't changed your habit. You're as bad as you were before in breaking your promise. In 30 days, you've been keeping your promise with Allah. I'll break my fast on time. I'll start my fast on time. You prayed on time. Please keep your promises outside. In the month of Ramadan, you did not lie, you did not cheat. In the month of Ramadan, you did not backbite, you did not slander, you did not swear. In the month of Ramadan, you did not do any gossip, you did not see any evil, you did not hear any evil, you did not say any evil, you did not do any evil. In the month of Ramadan, you did none of that. Why break that habit? And straight after Ramadan, you start indulging in doing evil. So, it's the time in the month of Ramadan to develop taqwa, change your habit, consciously. 
I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to smoke ever again. I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie ever again. I'm not going to backbite, I'm not going to backbite ever again. Number three, change your company. If you've got bad friends, give them up. Anyone who does not spiritually benefit you should not be your friend. Remember this. Anyone who will not benefit you spiritually should not be your friend. I'm really sorry to say this. I am, my journey is to go to, to heaven. My journey is to go to heaven. If you don't even believe in heaven, why should I be friend with you? Because our lifestyle is very different. Our thinking is very different. I'm doing everything to go to heaven. And you're not, you're not, you don't even believe it. I can accept somebody, I can accept somebody who doesn't believe in it, but doesn't stop me from getting to heaven. If somebody stops me from my spiritual journey, if somebody becomes a problem in my spiritual journey, should not be in my life. I'm not interested. I tell you one thing. I will not. I find it difficult, even if it's my own brother, to have a relationship with my brother or my sister, if they are going to be a hindrance to my path to Jannah. I find it difficult. If you are developing taqwa, change your company. The company is the one who helps you in your moral and ethical life, in leading a decent and a good life, life of decency, life of life of benefiting other people. Life of good habits. Change your company will help you develop taqwa. If your friend gives you hashish to smoke, ah, that's a friend you don't want to have. If your friend is encouraging you to go to the bars and the and, and the clubs to drink and behave silly, that's not a friend that you want to have. If a friend is encouraging you to join a gang, carry guns, knives, or get involved in criminality, that's a friend you want to run away from as soon as possible. A friend who says, hey, cheat in your business, that's not a friend you want. Number four, train your eyes so that you can conform to taqwa standard. What do I mean by eyes conforming to taqwa standard? Eyes fall often at people that walk by. Guys, we have a bad habit of looking at every woman that passes by. Don't lie. Guys have a bad habit of looking at every woman that passes by. What does Allah say about this? Allah says, lower your gaze. If your eyes become lustful, lower it. In the Quran, Allah says, Put your eyes down, look, look down, because the second gaze is from Shaytan. It's a lustful gaze, a sexualized gaze. Make your eyes taqwa standard. Doesn't look at obscenity, nudity, pornography, doesn't look at rubbish, doesn't entertain rubbish with its eyes. It's become Muslim through the eyes too. Do you know your heart, your eyes are mirrored to your heart. What you see gets reflected in your heart. And what gets reflected in your heart is what generates the emotions and the triggers in your brain. You want to control all of those? Make your eyes better, you'll get that. Number five, expose your ears to sounds of your soul. What do I mean by that? Those who listen to rubbish, their soul is filled with rubbish. Their head is filled with rubbish. Those who expose their ears to beautiful words, words of benefit, words of power, words of upliftment, they find their soul, their heart, their mind filled with goodness. I remember once I was playing badminton. I play badminton every now and again. Not very good, so don't challenge me, please. I'm okay. So I went into the badminton court, and next to the badminton court, another court, another hall, somebody was playing loud music. And I couldn't play. I just couldn't play. After losing two games, I said, something is not wrong. I'm losing games to people that I've won before. I just couldn't concentrate. So I went next door, and it was a lady who was running her gym, her exercise class. She had finished her class, so I went to her and I said, oh, what music are you playing? She goes, why? She goes, I'm playing rugby. I said, my dear sister, your rugby music is disturbing my head. She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I can't concentrate. I can't concentrate on badminton. She goes, I play deliberately. Why do you play deliberately? Because my people who come to do gym, they get so pumped up by this music that they do what I tell them to do. Words, lyrics, sounds can have hypnotizing impact on you, on all of us. If you listen to 
rubbish 24 hours a day with your headphone right into your head. What do you expect? Your music that you're listening to, songs that you're listening to, is inviting you to violence, inviting you to gangs, inviting you to guns, inviting you to nudity, inviting you to pornography, inviting you to sexuality, inviting you to all sorts of immorality and evil. What do you expect your children to behave like when that's what they're listening to 24 hours a day? What do you expect them to do? Oh, it's okay, it's a bit of music. I walked into H&M in central London the other day with my children. And they were showing music songs, music, the musical video was playing. Girls were half, there was no clothes on them. And it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. I walked straight out. I felt embarrassed looking at the screen. I said to all of the shop assistants, why are you showing that? She goes, oh, it's okay, it's only music video. Music video, worse than pornography. If you're constantly listening to rubbish, your soul is going to be affected. So if you want to gain taqwa, if you want to develop taqwa, fill your ears with sounds to your soul. Sounds of benefit. What sounds of benefit, my brothers and sisters? For a Muslim, the Quran, of course. The most important one. The words of Allah. Songs that remind you of Allah. Songs that remind you of goodness. Songs that invite you to goodness. Or words of lyrics, poem, poetry, essays. Ears are very important. You know when you go to sleep, your eyes are closed. Your eyes are closed. But does your ear close? No. Smaller sound, you woken up. How do you get woken up by so and so Not by your eyes. It's the sound of your alarm clock. Or mommy calling your name. Or daddy calling your name. Number six, make your mouth taqwa friendly. In the month of Ramadan, making your mouth taqwa friendly requires you to make sure you don't say anything wrong with your mouth. A lot of us have a bad habit of swearing, backbiting, slandering and gossiping. Talking about other people behind their backs. Or we have a bad habit of talking rubbish through our mouth without even thinking. A brother was talking to me a couple of days ago in the month of Ramadan. Every other word was F word. And I said to him, brother, I don't understand. You're fasting. Yes, I'm fasting. Why are you using F word? Really? Did I use it? Yes. You've become so desensitized to it, so used to it, you don't even realize that you're using it. A believer's tongue matters. A believer's tongue matters. Taqwa is developing tongue that is also taqwa friendly. Number seven, spend more time in the service of humanity. Help other people. Yesterday, I was driving along, uh, crossing A406. As I was coming up to A406, North Circular Road in North London, I saw a lady standing in the middle of the road, waving her hand like this everywhere. Everyone, stop. Nobody's stopping. Her car is broken down. Nobody would stop. I'm on the main road. I'm about to turn right into North Circle Road. I can't even stop. So I decided to change my direction. I indicated, came onto the left lane, lane, came over, found a grocery, parked my car inside the grocery, and ran back and said, what's the problem? What's happened? She goes, to my car, car is broken down. I've been stuck here for the last 20 minutes, trying to stop somebody, but nobody would stop. What's wrong with the car? The battery is flat. Okay. So I started shouting from the middle of the road. Anybody wants to help? Please come. This lady's car's broken down. People thought I was mad. People were looking at me thinking I'm mad. I literally went into the barbers. Got two, three people out of their chair. They said, come, come. They came, looking at me, thinking I'm completely possessed. I said, guys, let's push this car. It took us three minutes to clear the road, push the car to a safe space, and I told her, her battery is too flat to get it jump started, so she needs to replace the battery. Has she got a family? She goes, her son is coming. I left her safe. As I was leaving, she started crying. She goes, can I shake your hand, please? I said, why? She goes, nobody helped me for the last 20 minutes. Humanity have lost the sense of service because we've become selfish, materialistic, self-centered, arrogant and egotistical. I'm not saying I am the example of it, but we have to stop and serve humanity. Muslims, not Muslims, man, woman, children, doesn't matter who they are. Service to humanity is one manifestation of taqwa. Number eight, guard your prayers diligently. You don't pray, you will not have taqwa. Please listen to me very carefully. Some people say, oh brother, I fast in the month of Ramadan, but I don't pray. Well, my brother, my sister, I've got bad news for you. You pray, you get taqwa. You don't pray, you don't get taqwa. You know why? It's like my mobile phone. When my mobile phone loses charge, what happens? Can I use it? 
My faith, my iman's charge is my prayer. Please mark this very carefully. Those who don't pray don't have the power of iman within them. They think they do, but they don't. That's why my daily prayers in, for a Muslim is an obligation. As Rasulullah Sallallahu said, it's an obligation. You must not miss it. Five daily prayers have finished, inshaAllah. Charge your prayer, charge your iman, your taqwa, Allah consciousness by your daily prayers. And the ninth one, the last one, keep your heart clean. What do I mean by heart clean? Forgive one another often. If you've done something wrong, I forgive you. If I've done something wrong to you, I ask you to forgive me. I ask Allah to forgive me if I've done something wrong against him. Constantly asking each other, keeping a check on your heart to see if you're carrying grudges, heart feelings, if you're holding grudges against people. If you are feeling like that, forgive people. Tell them you forgive them. Ask them to forgive you. Not in a text message, not a WhatsApp message. I'm going to hide everybody, please forgive me. That's not a forgiveness, really sorry. That's called a commercial statement to hundreds of thousands of people. Why are you sending me a forgiveness message? Have you hurt me? No, I haven't. Why are you sending me one then? If you have hurt me, pick up the phone and talk to me. Tell me I've hurt you. Please forgive me. So keep your heart clean. A clean heart will find on the day of judgment Allah's forgiveness waiting for them. And Allah's ready paradise waiting for them. So to finish off, ladies and gentlemen, nine ways of developing taqwa. Develop your mind, number one. Change your habit, number two. Change your company, number three. Change, train your eyes to conform to taqwa friendly. Change them, uh, number four. Number five, expose your eyes to sounds of your soul. Number six, make your mouth taqwa friendly. Number seven, spend more time in the service of humanity. Number eight, guard your prayer diligently. And number nine, keep your heart clean. May Allah give us all taqwa in the way we should have. And may Allah forgive us for my mistakes, our mistakes, and keep our hearts united. وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.